The clock is ticking for people in the New Madrid seismic zone. A massive earthquake affecting an eight-state region of the Midwest is on its way. Using historical data and expert predictions, you will be an eyewitness to a mega disaster that tears open the New Madrid Fault exactly as it did in 1811. 9 a.m., perhaps tomorrow, New Madrid, Missouri. Five miles beneath the surface, massive upheavals and fissures break along the New Madrid Fault, stretching from Arkansas to Illinois. The ground rumbles and starts to shake, and it doesn't stop. For 80 interminable seconds, it churns the ground violently, a magnitude 8 earthquake. Thousands of panicked office workers are tossed and terrorized in their work cubicles. For most, this is their first earthquake. Truck traffic grinds to a halt, and bridges and overpasses crack. The first things to be destroyed are several vital bridges across the Mississippi. In Memphis, Tennessee, 50 miles south of the fault, liquefaction near the river collapses unreinforced masonry structures. Debris clogs the streets. I would anticipate unreinforced masonry buildings, even facade-covered buildings, suffering extensive damage. You're going to have the facades peeling off, unreinforced masonry buildings probably pulling their walls away and collapsing. Some buildings with earthquake protection will ride out the shaking. But emergency personnel will not be able to navigate the debris-choked streets. Ground faulting disrupts runways at the Memphis airport, bringing shipping to a halt and creating a transportation nightmare. 150 miles north in St. Louis, high-rise buildings are heavily shaken in the quake. Seismic waves moving through hard mid-continent rocks travel hundreds of miles without losing strength. The soil under the city of St. Louis is a major factor in the level of destruction. The majority of its downtown area is right close to the river. So in St. Louis, you can see it's got the red. A lot of the infrastructure coming in there on the highways is also in that, that same area. Seismic waves traveling farther and faster, just as in 1811, damage buildings over 350 miles away. 1,000 miles east, the Atlantic seaboard gets shaken just five minutes after the initial shock. From St. Louis to Memphis, the Mississippi River, choked with debris, bombards levees and earthen banks. Houses are swept away and boats are thrown ashore. We have hints of the types of damage we could expect along the rivers based on the actual observations of the 1811-1812, where we had a tremendous amount of landsliding, debris deposited into the rivers. Um, all that's going to be coming down river. It's going to be hitting bridges, going to be hitting supports, potentially taking the bridge out. Where the new Madrid Fault crosses under the Mississippi River, upheavals create chaos on the water. When a massive island blocks the downstream flow, the water, just as it did in 1811, charges back upstream. Mysterious fissures open up in the earth and geysers of water and sand shoot into the sky as they did in 1811. Like the pioneers, people are terrified by this otherworldly phenomenon. It seems the world is coming apart. In an eerie replay of 1811, gaping holes open in the ground, swallowing everything, from people to parked cars. We have major levees along the river, so which would be broken, breached. Uh, we have railroads and highways and so forth. So when you have permanent ground deformation, you are deforming those man-made objects and tearing them up in the process. Natural gas pipelines break and spread the disaster across five states. We have a number of major gas line facilities, pumping stations, lines that come through the central U.S. We're talking 30, 40 inch lines that are running through these areas that uh, are vulnerable. The disruption in supply will affect Chicago and the entire Northeast. Those who survive the intense ground shaking and the collapsing buildings look to the sky. Thick columns of smoke are the first warning of a new disaster. 
something the 1811 residents never had to deal with, firestorm. White hot sparks from downed electrical wires ignite clouds of natural gas. Fires break out all across Memphis. Firefighters respond where they can, but find hydrants dry. Underground water supply lines have been destroyed. Firefighters are only able to extinguish a small percentage of the fires raging throughout the city. A FEMA study estimates that a 7.7 .7 quake will shatter and burn some 17,000 structures in Memphis, leaving more than 25,000 homeless. As in 1811, the earth continues to rumble and shake. Violent aftershocks surge across the region. Three close to magnitude 8.0 in the first 24 hours. After that, tremors constantly rattle frayed nerves. It's not just a cut and dried, here's the disaster, you deal with and you move on. We've got the potential of repeated disasters in a short period of time. Just when people think it's safe to return to their homes, a second quake strikes, damaging the already crumbling infrastructure. How do you deal with a housing issue? How do you deal with recovery from an event when you got the potential, a week later, two weeks later, a couple months later, being hit again? So that's the challenge we have in the central US. A third and final big quake, an 8.0 like February of 1812, causes major ground failure and upheaval. Throughout the region, rivers are blocked or turned out of their banks. They create new lakes or inundate small cities. As these killer quakes and thousands of aftershocks bigger than San Francisco's 1906 quake break across the eight-state region, America will face terror and death on a scale never before seen for an extended four-month period. Then, just as suddenly as they began, the quakes will end and the rebuilding will begin. <laughs>